Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a PCB here, <laughs> and it's off some sort of dual control system, that's as much as I know about it really. It looks like, yeah, these look like some sort of optical sensors to me, or something like that. Probably an optical sensor, so something moves between here, but probably as it's moving this door, it's rotating, maybe it's like a, a disc with like lines on, and then maybe a solid area when it knows it's opened or closed. There's another one here. So there's two optical sensors. There's no more because there's a little connector here. This has escape. That must be like an emergency open thing, I think. What else do we have? Motor, brake. What's this thing? Alarm. Uh, all these are sort of marked with various cryptic or not so cryptic things but this one I think is where the power comes in yeah power let's zoom down a little bit so we have a connector in here yeah this has escape as well by the looks of it There's this one here I mentioned, so this is ground and 24 volt power. So we know at least where the power comes in. It says plus 24, so we can say it is DC. Various or this or that. These things come out easily. Oh, oh. RS485, is that some sort of, oh, ARCnet. I bet some sort of serial data. A bit like RS232, yeah, something like that. Uh, this one, what do we have? More RS485s. Reader. That's where they connect the reader. Okay. And this lot. Ins and outs, probably some sort of switches. Ground 24. So I'm suspecting this probably powers some external device that has some sort of sensors for ins and outs. So this is kind of like an access control system. I think that's the best we can say. I do know a little bit more about it. So what I do know is this comes from a local tourist attraction, a nature theme park, where they have birds and uh, dolphins you know that sort of thing yeah and that's where it comes from and they want this fixing like yesterday because apparently they can't open without this <laughs> so this is like super urgent the other thing i know is that i'm not the first person to look at it because this came in from handy andy who seems to know everybody on this island and he said that this capacitor has been changed and that's the one they took out. <laughs> I mean, whether this one was in this condition before they took it out or whether this one got in this condition while they were taking out, I don't know. But he said they've changed this, but he didn't know why they changed it. So maybe it wasn't like that originally. And the fault is apparently it's dead. There's no power. So what can we do with it? Well, we can do quite a bit, but we can't do everything. If this has got some sort of problem in this logic circuitry, really guys, there's probably nothing we can do. If it's got some problem in the power circuitry, then we may be able to. On here, we have two power devices. Let's see if we can focus on them. These could be MOSFETs, could be, yeah, the three legs on them, could be voltage regulators. No, the MOSFETs, IRF 540N. So we can certainly check these and have a look at maybe how these are being driven. I suspect these are driving the motors because that's where the motor connections are, so it makes sense. Yeah. And this thing, it looks like an audio amplifier chip. I'm not saying it is, but that's what it looks like. Okay. Let's get a bit of light on this and see if it what it will reveal. Yeah, will you reveal yourself? 
Well, that's the best focus I can get on is L6203. There's some sort of motor controller, Jim. L2, L6203. Yeah, or is it 6803? No, I think it's 6203. I'll look under the magnifier. Okay, I've just cleaned it up a little bit. It is L6203. And you may just see up here, if I get the glare off, it's got an ST sign. SGS Thompson, yeah, it is on there. I can see it better than the magnifier. So we can look for a data sheet for this. That's probably the first thing we'll do. And that may give us some idea about, about what this is actually doing. Full bridge driver. This is going to be the motor driver ST as they make, so I must be on the right one. That's it. Ours is this thing, multi watt 11. Oh, what's it do? It's got two outputs. This will be what's driving those MOSFETs for sure. Two inputs. Yeah. It has a V ref. That's usually useful if you want to know if a chip is actually working, as it does the reference voltage pin have the expected voltage on it. It has an enable pin on the 11, that might help us. It has a supply voltage on two, so that may help us. So that might give us some idea of how we can work on this. Let's have a look what else is on the board. I'll use a microscope, it's probably going to be easy to see things. So LM2574. We can look at that one up. I'll just make a note of some of these things. Okay, around here we see looks like two more things. Could be 10750. These might be voltage regulators. Oh, we can have a look. P87, P87 1750L, probably the part number. We can have a look at those. These are the actual, uh, oh, there's another chip. This is some sort of logic chip, 74HC273D. That'll be connected into the processor on this. Probably a latch or something like that. Okay, let's have a look what else we've got. We've got these big chips now. That's probably the processor, 29C257, unless it's a memory chip, EEPROM. Altera chip. But if there's a problem in this lot, we probably can't do anything with this, yeah? MC688C110, is that maybe the processor? What else do we have? Have a nosy around it. A couple of these chips, 3721. 3721. Not sure what is the actual part number on them. Texas Instruments as a maker. We can work, so it's a TI. 3721. Yeah, could be the other number. Hard to say without looking. Okay. And that's about it for chips on here. We have some more of these things. Exactly the same, 10750L. Have three more of those. We have uh, whatever they are, possibly opto isolated or even little transformers. They're quite chunky for a chip, quite thick. We little coils if you like. These are definitely opto isolators. Some rather funky looking resistors there. I like, look at them. Yeah, they are interesting. Guessing they are resistors. Could be capacitors. Uh, bit of an unusual type of component, actually, that. And uh, we have some chunky looking things, and we have this one, which looks like it could well be another coil, possibly. I mean, these are all near to the inputs and outputs, so these are connecting to the outside world, and all of these things are. Okay, so they're obviously going to be isolating this board in some way. And that's about what we have. Okay. Let's have a look at what some of the other things are on here then. So LM2574, we have this. Ah, oh, switching regulator. That's interesting. So that could be something we should be looking around to see what's going on with it. Or if I just like to put 
step down switching regulator so we may have some problem around that definitely worth a look we have some components marked 10750 that look like voltage regulators or MOSFETs or something L yeah again people have looked for this before those are huh well it's not finding anything like what we're looking for that's for sure yeah chokes and such like I don't think that's anything like ours. Maybe we can actually have a look at one and see what it is, basically, or what it looks like on the board. We have a Texas Instruments uh, 3721. It might be the TA. It's a Texas Instruments device, that's for sure. Not sure there's anything obvious coming up there. Let's just have a look for it. So we'll put in uh, Texas or TI. Okay, see what we find. Could be this one. That's a surface mount thing. Okay, so I can't obviously find what that one is either. And the 748C273D, as I said, will be some sort of latch or something. Quad D type flip flop. Okay, yeah, something like that. So, unfortunately, it wasn't quite so useful as it might have been, apart from this thing here. There's probably some sort of voltage regulator. In fact, there's an inductor coil next to it now. So, that looks like it is a power supply. So, that we can have a look at. So, what should we do? Should we just power this up and see what it does? Probably not. There's a relay here, by the looks of it. Is it a relay? I'm not sure it is a relay. Two point zero seven milli Henry's four amp two hundred and fifty volts. I think that's some sort of filter on the on the input basically. Okay. I think what we'll do is first is let's look at some short circuits. Let's make sure there aren't any short. So the main place to look for them is on the large devices. So let's go around the board and have a look to see if we can find anything in the way of short circuits. We could do this kind of randomly, but the first place I'm going to look is where they've changed this capacitor. They've obviously changed this for some reason. Let's have a look. Well, there's no short there. There's no short, there's, there's no particular indication why that might have been changed. Let's look at these large diodes. I am actually going to go into diode mode. Okay. So, well, that one reads okay. There's more of them here. So let's just go around and check all the diodes to see if they look okay. Well, there's a short circuit one to start with. It's either a short circuit diode or there's something in this area that's across it. So we need to just remove that and have a look. Uh, while I'm at it, there's one more over here. And that isn't short. There's just a capacitor across it. That looks like a shot key diode, 0 0.211. We can possibly check the part number on it or lift one end of it. Uh, while we're at it, what we've got the, here, these capacitors. Well, there's no short there. No short there. Surround these things. And then we'll come back to that shorty diode. Well, that needs a very low resistance, but I will go back to that diode. I'm not sure exactly what this device is. Maybe we need to find out a bit better. But we have more of them. So does that one read the same as this one, for example? That's connected to there. No, it reads completely, it reads completely different. Okay. 
those reading different, so we need to look at that. I think they're both the same device. And there were some more of these things over here. Let's look at these ones. Well, that one means like a short. That one doesn't. Another diode thing here. I think I'm going to go all the way back to this because if this is reading short, this diode, it could well be causing the other readings to be wrong as well. And this one I think was okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Let's get this one unsoldered. There are some quite heavy tracks around here. Interestingly, this is connecting to this capacitor that they've changed. Yeah, we're in that area, all right. So, hmm, let's have a look. This could be quite difficult to melt. I'm having to get quite a bit of heat in there, but I am doing it. Let's go with a bit of flux and we'll try solder braid first. See how easily this comes out. Okay, in fact, I'm not going to use solder braid. I'm just going to actually try and lift the component out from the board. Just get something underneath it. I may even actually try it from this side. Let's see if we can do it. Put the more pointy down under. Okay. Heat it from this side. And see if it'll just lift out. No, that's clearly really quite tricky. Okay. Go again. I think it probably will come out. Yeah. Lifting out quite nicely. See if we lift one end out and then we'll see if it really is short or not. Nope, probably can't do that. Go to the other end. Let's have a go. Okay. Guys, there's different ways of doing this. I use different ways and different occasions quite often. But there it is. Whatever you think, the way I did it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. It came out and didn't break anything. Let's see if that diode is actually short. No, the diode isn't short. So there's some sort of short on this board where this diode connects to and we need to find it yeah we've got to find it so that one reads like a shock key diode that reads more like a normal diode that reads like a normal diode but there's no short yeah let's have see if we can just see where this one goes to In fact, actually, let's see if we can see a short from one end of this to ground, I'm thinking maybe. So ground is coming in here on the green thing, yeah, zoom out a little bit. So ground is coming in here, it says ground, probably goes to the negative end of this capacitor, let's have a look. No, actually it doesn't. Well, the negative end of this capacitor actually is connecting to where it says 12 volts. Let's read across the capacitor. 
It's not short. And yet, as says plus 12 volts, which goes to the negative end of this capacity. Maybe that isn't the negative end of this capacitor at all. It's just the way the marking says negative, 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 but it goes to both ends, yeah. It's just the negative end of the capacitor. Yeah. So that's the negative end. And there's no short to ground there, okay? Is there a short here? No. So where's our short? I'm going to look around again at these large components. If I still see a short somewhere. Okay. Seems to be a short here. Seems to be a short around that one. And the other ones. Let's have a better go to see if we can figure out what these things actually are. Well, I think they this one. I found it 10750L and it said SOT233, which I knew was a small outline transistor. And that looks like it's the thing that I have. So it looks like I have at least one of these short circuits. Yeah, they look the same size. Although I can't find the exact data sheet, it apparently it's a MOSFET. So it looks like these are MOSFETs. We have one, two, three, four, five. I don't think there's any more. And they don't all read the same. It seems possible this one has a short. So I think what I will do is actually remove all five and we can test them with a component analyzer. We can see if they actually are MOSFETs and we can figure out how many of them are actually good. We can also figure out if removing this one gets rid of the short that we can see not on the diode, but actually on the PCB here. Okay, this end of the, this end of the diode is actually completely free, yeah? Okay, so this short, which also appears here from what I can see. But it may not be, so let's remove these and let's test them and let's see if the short's gone. There's a lot of plastic around here, but I'm going to have to do it with the hot air. There's also the optical sensor underneath just to make this really difficult. I don't want to be melting these things, that's for sure. I mean, if I damage these a little bit, well, it's unfortunate, but... I think if I blow the hot air kind of that way, I can try adding leaded solder to them, but I'm sure this tab actually goes underneath. If I try to lever them off using solder, I know I'm going to break them. So, yeah, maybe if we can unsolder this connector here, and we can unsolder that one, which is the closest, we might not cause a problem. I'm certainly going to unsolder this one because it's so close to here. I can't really direct the air any other way. These, I think I might just put some Kapton tape over them just to protect them from the heat. Let's give it a go. Okay, you can see I've just literally pushed that out of the board from the other side. So if you can push it a little bit more. Now I think I actually have it flush now. But if I take the tweezers, get onto the legs, it hopefully will come out. I 
Okay, let's try it. So we've got the tweezers on it. Grab it by the legs, the pins. Yeah, so that's come out nicely. We won't be damaging that one. That actually went so easy. I think I'll do this one as well. If I manage to damage the pin header and the jumper, well, I can take the jumper off, but if I damage the pin header, I've got them anyway. Let's go for, the, let's go for this other one. Try the same technique. Bubble solder, push it into the board. Yeah, again, I think that's flush. Silly coming out a little bit. See if we can just get the tweezers. Okay. Again, it came out quite nicely. Pulled the pins out a little bit, but I'm sure we can sort that out. Yeah. Yep, that looks fine. Anything else? I'm not quite sure I'll get this one off so easily, but I think now we can have a go at this. I can put a bit of flux, I'm not sure how much this will help. Let's do this one first and let's see if this tab is actually soldered underneath there. I can add a bit of leaded solder on the ends, it won't help, it won't hurt. It might not help, but it won't hurt. Okay. If it does help, it will unsolder a lot easier. And I won't have to get so much heat in to do it, okay. Let's see. Get in the direction I can actually work easily. And try not to melt any plastic. Came off quite nicely. And in fact, we can see that the tab is just soldered on the end. So putting leaded solder on all of them is definitely going to help. Well, that one's actually coming off with a soldering iron. Did you see that? See if I can do it. So we hit one end. Okay, then we hit the other end. Let's see if we get, we get us off the board. Yeah, look. That's even better. So they're coming off with a soldering iron. Even better. So we get one end hot. And then coming on the other end. Yeah. Okay. One end hot. Coming on the other end. Yeah. That's better guys, that's the better way to do it. Should be able to do that with the last one. So, add some leaded solder. See one that, ah oh, yeah, you see it's coming. See it? How about that? Okay guys, so we can let those cool down. We get our component analyzer and see what it thinks of them. While we're waiting for those to cool down, let's have a look to see if the short's gone, okay? What do you think, guys? Has it gone? No, the short is still on the board. So we still have a problem somewhere. We can look around these MOSFETs, but let's just check all the ones we've removed now. If these are good, we can soon put them back on, no problem. 
I do think it was worthwhile because of the strange readings around them. Maybe that is because of this short, which is elsewhere. But at least we know these are good now. Yeah, so that's one thing we can eliminate. We know these are good if they test. Okay, let's have a go. Should be able to do this. A bit tricky maybe, but we'll see. Okay. See if we can get the other one onto the tab. Because the tab will be connected to the middle bit. Okay. Well, that's a good MOSFET. Okay. That's a good MOSFET. So they are MOSFETs. That's something else we know. Uh, gate on this end, which is normal. Drain source. So the drain is the tab. Okay. I'll just check all the other ones and I'll let you know if any of them are faulty. I've just desoldered the capacitor that they kind of bodged in here. Although there was no shorts reading across it, but it wasn't very good. So this is 330 microfarad, 63 volts. The one that they crushed was the same value. Okay. I may find one that fits better than that, to be quite honest. I'm not going to resolder these just yet because the short is clearly still on the board and the noise you can hear is the vacuum desoldering tool warming up so i'll use the tool to clean these holes out and then let's see if we can find where this short is okay while well, i've been chattering this is now warmed up it probably won't do it without hot air but we can have a go and there's some heavy power plays and ground plays in this board well that's actual fact it did do it Yeah, came off nicely. I'll just put the capacitor on one side. I've got all the removed components in here, so nothing goes missing. We'll replace everything once we found where the short is. Okay. And the bent one. So, let's just clean this. There we go. So let's see what's short. We know it's not one of these devices. We've checked these diodes. The short is still on the board. Okay, the leg is completely lifted, so it's not that diode. So it's probably going to be a power device. This one, I'm sure we already checked. Yes, I think these are capacitors. Looks okay. Well, it doesn't read short at least. Mm. Those ones we already looked at. Don't read short. Don't read short. So, what do we have left? Power devices. Well, we have these two MOSFETs, okay? Let's look at these. Is there short here? That's ground. I'm on there. Well, there's no short there. And there's no short there. There's no short around the device, so it can't be that device, okay? Not there, not there. What else do we have that's a power device? Well, it's voltage for heat sink, so this must be a power device. Let's see if from either side of this short goes to this chip. I don't think it goes to ground. We go there, yeah? We know this is ground. And there's no short to there to there, this is the positive supply rail. Okay, so wherever the short is, it's not a short to ground. Let's see. So we'll go from this end. I think this does go to this chip. Yeah, it clearly goes there, yeah. So it's the other end. Well, obviously it means a short, but it's short. It goes anywhere else. It goes to that pin on the chip. Okay. So it looks like, assuming this is pin one, it goes one, two, three, four, that pin one and pin two on our chip have a short. 
Could be the chip, could be a capacitor or something. But there's a short here. Well, we can check across all the capacitors. Uh, it's looking like the chip. So we know the part number of this chip. Let's have a look at the data sheet and see what pins one and two are. So it was this one, L6203. So two is supply and one is out. Well, I think we can say with absolute certainty a supply shouldn't be shorting to out. Uh, this is a block diagram. Out is there. Supply is here. Look, this is an internal MOSFET between supply and out. That must be the short. That must be the short. And that diode that we see must be connected between out and supply. Yeah, maybe kind of like a, what they call them, like a, um, I know what I'm thinking. If this is driving an inductor, let me draw it. So what I'm thinking, guys, is this, that we have effectively this chip, and we have VS, which is a positive supply, and inside here is like a bridge type affair with a couple of different MOSFETs, and this probably going to grounds. I haven't traced it through. And here we have this uh, V out. Okay. Not V out. It's called out one. So it's called out one. Yeah. And I'm thinking probably from here, there's an inductor coil going back to VS. Okay. And this is switching this end of this coil. And if that's the case, what you would find is almost certainly from here to here a diode reverse biased so when this is positive on this end respect to this end this diode does not conduct when this MOSFET switches off you get a back EMF from this coil which is not an inductor this will be in the motor yeah and, and, and I'm pretty sure this motor will kind of have like two coils the other one driven from out two on this chip. Okay, makes sense. And that's what this diode will do. So when this MOSFET switches off, it effectively allows the voltage to pass this way because the field will collapse and the motor, this end will become more positive than that end. And that voltage needs somewhere to go. So it goes through this diode. Okay, a flyback diode. That's called a flyback diode. And you find them in all these sort of circuits, for example, switching a relay, something like that. And what we have is a short in this MOSFET, I would say. I'll have to take the chip out to be sure, but that's what it's looking like. Therefore, we read a short across this diode. Because this is disconnected, the motor is not plugged in, so we can't read a low resistance through that. I think we just literally see the short here. So we're going to have to take this chip off the board. Doing this is not going to be particularly easy. So what I'll do first is see if we can determine, and we can determine, by the way, if the short really is in this chip. Because I don't want to be removing this, I want to find it somewhere else, okay? So the short is from pin one to pin two, okay? And what we can do is we can cut pin one here, because we can always solder it back on. We could try lifting it out of the board, but I don't want to effectively break off the pin going into the chip either. So without doubt, I'm just going to cut it and then we can put a bit of solder if we need to put it back on. Okay, so this is where we're going to cut the pin. Like so. Yeah. How's the short gone? Let's go across the diode. Yes, it has. So this chip is defective. This needs to be replaced. I will have to go and see Andy to see whether or not he's going to the capital last Palmer's tomorrow. If he is, then he can bring a chip. And I'm not going to try and desolder this one. I'm effectively going to cut all the legs off it and then just clean all the holes ready for the new one to go in. Okay, so let's take this chip off. I'll actually try to do it with the vacuum desoldering tool, but if it's not going to come easily, I will cut the legs off it, okay? 
if it's duff anyway it doesn't really matter but I will just try sorry guys I forgot to hit record then um, I used the vacuum desoldering 200 came straight out no problem that actually surprised me a little bit these can be very difficult to unsolder because if you melt the solder on one side and then try and pull them out of the board you'll probably rip the pads off these tracks the vires will come out of the board and you'll cause damage which you'll have to repair before you replace it so this one really we can say is faulty but we can actually prove it okay so we can go from pin one to pin two and it's short okay it's short so why did it go short well this will be connected to the motor we have here motor and brake yeah and i'm fairly sure we can say pin two was power in so pin one was out one goes to this motor and not this one this marked brake yeah so it goes to here so it's possible that whatever motor is attached on here is short or the wiring to it is short so a short circuit here would be a good explanation why the chip went it's also possible the chip just went you know the problem is i'm not actually on site so i can't say so handy andy who brought this in will have to take this back and we'll have to measure the resistance of this winding and if it looks like a short then the problem is with the motor and they'll have to get somebody to replace that motor so the question is should we check anything else on this board i mean this is an obvious fault we know what's wrong with that but should we go further with this and i think the answer is yes because we have the other what looks like a short circuit around the mosfet but the mosfet itself checked okay but i think we need to investigate that further this video is now what 45 minutes something like that so what we're going to do is we're going to end that one today this is the end of part one and tomorrow i promise will be part two and we will investigate what looks like the other short circuit on this board so i'll see you all soon guys ciao for now